Sam Burke, Corporate Chef for Meat and Livestock Australia. Welcome to our second episode of Rare Medium Academy. Today, we're gonna to talk all things Australian summer lamb. Now, summer lamb, guys, is our biggest campaign for our sheep meat producers. And the reason why we're coming to you in December is because I want food service to be primed and ready to take part of this campaign in January. So we're, we're here to give you the inspiration, the know-how and the influence so you can be prepared to really generate off the back of this campaign because it's gonna be a big one in your outlet. Now, what are we here to? Obviously, we're here to create, educate and inspire. So what has Rare Medium Academy achieved? since we've gone live in about four weeks. Well, the first thing is, I'd like to say a big hello to our friends at TAFE New South Wales. So I'm pleased to announce here today on this webinar that TAFE New South Wales have taken on Rare Medium Academy as a program to not only influence their educators, but also influence their students of tomorrow, which are our chefs in the making, our chefs in the making. So. Really happy to have TAFE New South Wales on board, a leading RTO in New South Wales. And this program is now broadcasting to all their teachers out there. So a big hello to our friends at TAFE New South Wales. We're gonna be uh, broadcasting Rare Medium Academy live there in 2021. So more news to come on that one. Another thing that's really uh, touched me, I guess from our first masterclass, is that people have taken the learnings away and are sending emails directly to me on programs you know that they've put into their food service establishments and had success with so a big thank you to all those that have taken away some inspiration from our low and slow masterclass and have taken that to the next level in your establishment so and the third thing like the producer to plate series how good is that if you haven't seen it, log on to our website and go to Producer to Plate and you'll see Chef George Fuscarinas, National Culinary Development Manager from Compass, out there with our passionate producer, Charlie Blomfield. The wonderful thing I like about this is that the producer is talking directly with the frontline food service uh, leader. And, and, and one thing I always hear about producers when I talk to them when I'm on my, on my role, at my role here at uh, Meat and Livestock Australia, a lot, of, a lot of them don't know what happens to their product once it leaves farm gate. So the great thing about this is that they connect with the front end user and they both learn from each other. So we can take that passion to our customers. So a bit about today. What, uh, what do I expect for you to take away uh, today? Well, like I said, Summer Lamb, Biggest Campaign, Sam Kekovich, all those topical Australian themes you've seen over the years. We're gonna give you some easy dishes that you can replicate in big scale volume numbers for your business to have success with Australian sheep meat. We've got the best lamb in the world. We've got over 75 million head here in Australia, pasture fed products, Beautiful uh, uh, pastures, you know, predominantly lamb comes from around Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia and the east coast of Western Australia. So we've got those wonderful regions which, which produce some beautiful product. So why not learn how to have success with it? But, you know, first dish, Trackside, our friends at Australian Turf Club. That's where we're going this, this uh, webinar. With, thanks to big chef uh, Jerry Maher at Rose Hill Racecourse. We're going live and I'm actually gonna do a summer stir fry trackside with Cantonese lamb leg. Second dish, back to Rose Hill again. That uh, late night favorite, the lamb gyro. Dikanis elare, the Greeks have got it covered. We're gonna show you how to slow cook lamb shoulder so you can replicate this tasty dish in your establishment in record time with maximum customer satisfaction. That's the lamb shoulder, stay tuned for that one. The third dish, the iconic summer lamb grill. Well, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, Greek takeaway bars. You've also seen it in your clubs, your pubs. An ode to the producer. We're gonna show you how to do the perfect mixed grill. More on that later. And lastly, the ode to Australia, the lamb leg. We're gonna show you how to do a lamb leg in your food service establishment in 
in, in under an hour. So that gives you time back. It gives you those beautiful smells wafting through your kitchen and it'll give you success to keep the customers coming back and back again. So before we even go to our culinary uh, excursion at Rose Hill Racecourse in Sydney, we're gonna start off with our master butcher, Doug Piper. Now this guy knows his meat, over 30 years in the trade. When it comes to red meat, Doug Piper knows the animal like no other. We're gonna to flash to him, he's gonna go through the lamb carcass and what cuts we're gonna be utilizing today in the rare medium summer lamb masterclass. G'day, I'm Doug Piper, head butcher for Australian lamb. Today we're gonna to be looking at eight cuts from the lamb carcass that Sam Burke is going to be cooking up for you today for the rare medium masterclasses. Australia produces some of the best lamb in the world and this little beauty comes from down that southeastern part of Australia. The four dishes that Chef Sam's going to be cooking up for you today are going to be the mixed grill, where we're going to use the rump, the little loin we're going to cut into a barnsley chop, and we're going to use one of the shoulders to create a dish called kofta. The next dish is going to be a Cantonese style lamb stir fry. We're going to be using some of the muscles out of the lamb leg. This lamb leg, we're going to be doing a butterflied lamb leg as well. And also, we're going to do a Greek gyros, one of those yummy Greek gyros is out of the other side of the forequarter. To start with, we have to break this lamb down into the three main sections to get those great cuts of Australian lamb from. The forequarter, we're going to take that off at the fifth rib. The middle section there, the saddle, we're going to just separate that there at the rump and have the legs. So you'll have our legs, our saddle and our forequarter. Okay, the lamb forequarter, it is such a versatile cut of lamb. You know, we can cut so many different dishes or create so many different dishes out of this piece of the animal. Generally in a butcher shop, we would just cut this into barbecue chops, split it in half, run it through on the bandsaw, and we'd end up with a couple of dozen little lamb barbecue chops. But to make more out of it, to get more out of this piece of the animal, we can cut the neck off and we can create little lamb rosettes or create a dish like a lamb or sabuco using the neck section. The shoulders, we can slow cook them for up to 12, 15, 20 hours if you like, and you're gonna get the most succulent roast you'll ever get out of that piece of meat. And we still have a fair bit remaining. We can cut little lamb riblets out of the rib section, as well as a great little Spanish rack or a neck rack, or even a neck fillet. So the lamb shoulder offers great value and great economical dishes for you to create for your customers. So there we have it. We've boned out that whole lamb forequarter to create some great Australian lamb dishes. We've got the boneless forequarter there for the mince for a kofta. We've got our slow cooked shoulder there ready to go into the oven. And all the bones, we don't waste that. All the fat, we can use that. We can use the bones to make our stocks and our jus. And the fat can be blended in with some of the meat if it's a little bit too lean, or even blended in with your sausages for later on. Next up is a saddle. That's where we get those beautiful sweet lamb cutlets, the great little lamb loin chops, or those Barnsley chops that Chef Sam's gonna cook up for you later on, or everybody's favorite ribs, lamb ribs, those beautiful sweet little lamb riblets. So there you have it. There's the saddle all broken down into those three fantastic lamb cuts. We've got the lamb riblets, we've got the lamb racks that we can cut into lamb cutlets, and those fantastic little Barnsley chops, a little lamb loin chops that we've left whole to create one big B for Barnsley that Chef Sam's going to cook up later on. And finally, we have the lamb legs. Perfect for any occasion. So many dishes we can create out of this. The lovely lamb Sunday roast. Perfect. Absolutely perfect for that. The Cantonese lamb stir fry. We can cut the muscles there and we can slice them thinly. The butterfly lamb leg for the grill or the barbecue and the little lamb mini roast rumps, magic. So to start with, we have to separate the legs. So out of that, I have to take out all that H bone and the rump bone. So we're gonna follow the contours of the bone around and release all the meat from there. Secondly, we're gonna remove the little lamb rumps off of each one and we're going to take the cap off. So we can have a lovely little piece of lean red lamb there ready for the grill. Then we're going to bone out one of the legs and we're gonna create the Cantonese lamb stir fry with that. We're gonna use two of the muscles out of that because they don't have any connective tissue. And with the other leg, we're gonna bone that and we're gonna butterfly it so it's nice and flat and even, perfect for the grill. 
So there we have it, the versatile lamb leg, great for any occasion. We've got the butterfly lamb leg there, great on the grill. We've got all those lovely little primals there, the lean primals of the lamb leg. That'll go into our Cantonese style lamb or any type of lamb stir fry. Great little lamb shanks there. These ones have got the heel muscle on them, but nice and big and chunky, great for a slow cook. And then we've got all our bones and all our trim here, the bones for the stock and the jus. And they've got the trim there and you can blend a little bit of that fat in for the sausages or your mince. Fantastic piece of lamb. Well, if you didn't learn anything about lamb then, you must have been asleep because Doug is the best in the business and that was so captivating. So thank you, Dougie. So next up, um, I'm going to talk about our Weber EX6, the barbecue behind, beside me. We're giving this away at the end of today, so do hang around. Some lucky viewer is going to be working this beautiful baby with Australian beef and lamb all through summer. So our next dish, summer lamb stir fry. We did this track side at Rose Hill Racecourse, and it's an easy one for big numbers. The great thing about this is you have your mise en place ready, you have your lamb ready, the Cantonese lamb leg cut. That's what Dougie just showed you now. And then we do that a la minute for big numbers, straight into the pail to the customer. So here we go with the summer lamb stir fry. Today's recipe, stir fry lamb with summer greens. The one thing I like about stir fries, it's about getting all your prep, your mise en place done and having it ready to go for action, that's service time. And also the, the brilliant thing about it is that when you're cooking the stir fry, you've got that theatre that people can look into your kitchen and see you preparing it for them, fresh, hot and tasty. The other good thing about stir fry is that you really encapsulate the nutrients because it's fast cooking and you don't need a lot of oil. Today's dish, is gonna be done in about four to five minutes. So let's get into it. First up, our Australian lamb leg. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it really finely across the grain. And that's called a Cantonese cut. And what that will allow is a fast cooking process. Garlic, ginger, sambal alec, our meat into the wok, quickly followed by our soy and oyster. We wanna get a real good caramelization of that meat. Then we're gonna set it aside. Next step, Clean out your wok, back onto the heat. We're gonna start off with our onions, garlic, ginger, sambal, and our rustic hearty ingredients first, and then finish off with our things like the basil and our mushrooms towards the end, just to fold through so they keep their vibrancy in the dish. Now, this is where the orchestra comes together. We put our lamb back into our wok and fold it through our vegetables. Lastly, serve it on top of some beautiful steamed rice. Chef, this is my call to action to use this cut. Lamb leg is so versatile. Don't only think about roasting. It's also wonderful for stir frying. I'm just giving you an example here today, but you can add any sauce you want because the cook method is the same. You're gonna get a succulent product at the end if you follow my steps. The common theme you'll see today is that lamb can be used uh, uh, across the menu in a variety of different cultures and cook methods. That's what we're trying to teach you as chefs, the versatility of the product. You can roast it, you can braise it, you can stir fry it, you can um, sous vide it. The, 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 the amount of uh, things you can do with Australian lamb are endless. We're just giving you four recipes. Just to remember, you saw how to do that stir fry. You can add your own flavors, chef, as long as you get the method correct. And that's what we're gonna show you uh, throughout all our Rare Medium Academies, how to master the method and take it to the next level for your customer. Now, Sundays, I grew up in a, in a, in a suburban area in Ashfield in Sydney, and we had a lot of Greeks back in the 70s and 80s, and two of my best friends are actually Greek. And, and I had mum and dad's house, and I had a Greek family on the right, and a Greek family on the left. And every Sunday you could smell this beautiful lamb wafting over the coals. And what they mastered was this sandwich called the lamb gyro. So pita bread, slow lamb cooked shoulder over the coals, 
uh, taro masalada, garlic, the flavors are endless. We're gonna show you how to prep the protein so you can smash out the numbers in limited service capacity times for your business. What am I saying? I'm gonna show you how to prep the protein so then when you're on the chase and when you're on the pass, you can get this sandwich out to your customer, hot and fresh, affordable, and keep them coming back to your business. Let's go to the lamb gyro. Today's recipe, Australian lamb gyro. This dish pays tribute to my childhood in the 70s and 80s. Every Sunday, the Greeks and the Cypriots would be getting the lamb on the barbecue and the smell of the smoke would be wafting over and this was a sandwich that they perfected. It also reminds me of late night nostalgic food. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this with Australian lamb shoulder. Let's start with the meat. First step, we wanna get a nice score on our lamb shoulder. This will help entrap the flavors in the cooking process. Next, we're gonna get some olive oil onto our lamb and we're gonna get a bit of oregano, garlic, salt and pepper and rub that and massage it into the lamb all around the crevices to give a nice caramelization and flavor during the cooking process. Next up, the mirepoix. Celery, carrot, onion, a little bit of oil into a pan. We wanna get a nice caramelization there and then into a gastro pan and then we're gonna return that pan to the heat and then add the lamb get some nice caramelization on the lamb and then return the lamb to the gastro and nestle it on top of the mirepoix vegetables. Don't forget to put your stock into the lamb and the mirepoix, cover with baking paper and then foil. Into the combi oven, 94 degrees for 10 hours or if you've got less time on your hands, 160 degrees for four hours. This will cook the lamb wonderfully that we can just pull it off the bone and then add it to our lamb gyro sandwich. So people are saying, what's the fillings to an authentic gyro? I'm going to walk you through it. We've got a tzatziki, taramasalata, you can use both or either either. Taramasalata is a smoked cod roe that's also mixed with olive oil and lemon. We've got chaffinado Spanish onion, roast capsicum, flat leaf parsley, mixed lettuce, sliced tomato, salt and pepper. And then last of all, the star of the show, that beautiful lamb shoulder. How good is that lamb? Straight off the bone onto our lamb gyro. Right before I serve it, I like to add some crispy hot chips just to give it that nice texture and flavor and keep its authenticity. Chef, get this on your menu. It's easy to prepare, it looks good, it tastes good, and the customers are gonna come back again and again for more. Share the Australian land. So there's a hot in the hand favorite for your festival, your function, or even your QSR outlet. Don't uh, take advantage of Australian lamb at summer. Don't only think about roasting cuts. Think about braising cuts. Think about hot in the hand sandwiches. Think about lamb gyro. So the next dish, this one is iconic in Australian history. So if you think back to the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s and the 2010s, this has always played a part on the menu. The summer lamb mixed grill. Famous in pubs, famous in clubs, I even remember it used to be in the Greek uh, takeaway milk bars back in the day. We're gonna show you how to create the ode to the producer, a lamb tasting plate for your customer. So this one, one of the questions that came through on the YouTube box is what is the Barnsley chop? Well, the Barnsley chop was a, a bit of a cut that it's, I got inspired when I was over in business in the UK. And it is a midloin chop with the bone down the center of the spine and two midloins connected to each side. So something different, a genuous, genuine, sorry, a genuine double midloin chop for your customers as part of a mixed grill. We're also gonna go through the lamb rump, a little kofta, and a sausage. Let's go to the summer lamb mixed grill. Today's recipe, the lamb mixed grill. The mixed grill is an iconic dish that dates back to the 60s, 70s, and 80s in pubs, hotels, clubs, and even Greek takeaway shops. Today, we're gonna to show you how to make the perfect lamb mixed grill. And the first step is to have the right cuts. 
because we want to bring it all up as an orchestra at the end and be harmonious on the plate. The meats for your perfect summer lamb grill. Let's step you through them. The first one, lamb rump, beautiful cut. Grill it, then finish it in the combi oven. Lovely steak cut for your lamb grill. Next one, the Barnsley chop. Now here's one that I saw in the UK when I was over there on a work assignment. Two midline chops with the bone still in the middle. Fantastic, let's get it on your grill. Let's bring it back. Lamb and rosemary sausage. You can't have a mixed grill without a sausage. And last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect lamb kafta to accompany your mixed grill. So what accompanies our mixed grill? A zesty fatouche salad. Let me walk you through the ingredients. Onion, shallots, radish, cucumber, mescaline, watercress, tomato, and a lemon dressing with some crusty Lebanese bread. And don't forget your condiments. We've got a salsa verde and a salsa roja to accompany our lamb. First up, the kofta. Let me show you how to make that. Into the bowl, we want about a 60% lamb mince to 40% fat ratio. Why? Because we need the fat to make it nice and moist when we bring it together. On top of that, we're gonna add some finely shredded parsley, shredded capsicum, shredded onion, baharat or seven spice, garlic, salt and pepper. Next step, we want to bind all that together really good. We want to make sure that we get all those flavours enhanced into the lamb. And then we set it for one hour in the fridge so they can all come together and give the perfect lamb kafta. I've worked with many grill chefs over a long period in my apprenticeship and my trade. And I'll tell you what, a good grill chef will tell you it's all about bringing the products up harmoniously together so they can go out to the customer. So how are we gonna do that? First thing, we've got our thick cut Barnsley chops and our lamb rump. We want them to come to room temperature. Then we're gonna marinate them in some oil and some rosemary. Get the pan or grill top nice and hot. Get your sear and get your lamb rump and your Barnsley chop on that grill. Three to four and a half minutes, we turn the chops and we turn the steak. That's the time to get on your lamb and rosemary sausages and your kafta. The next three to four minutes, we then pull the Barnsley chop and the lamb rump off to rest and finish our kafta and sausage. Then we bring it all up on the plate with our customer and serve it with our condiments, salads and potatoes. The lamb grill, it really is a celebration of Australian lamb on the plate. This is spectacular, have a look at it and it's what we want to give to our customers to keep them coming back time and time again. As we say at Meat and Livestock Australia, share the lamb. So it really is the celebration of summer lamb on a plate. Get it on your menu, chef. Now, the reason why we're doing this, let me just re reiterate quickly. We want you to be part of our biggest lamb campaign in January, mid-January, summer lamb, share the lamb. It's gonna be all across the media. It's gonna be on billboards. It's gonna be on TV, that iconic commercial that you're looking for. Why not have your food service establishment take up the momentum and drive revenue and foot traffic to your business? That's the whole reason why I'm doing this in December, to give you time to prepare to lock it in for your January menus. Now, next dish, Sunday's butterfly lamb leg. This is a cracker. If you have a look at your traditional lamb leg, we serve it in the bone, which is great. It's a good heat insulator, but what if you've got minimal time and you need to get this roast done quickly? The butterfly lamb leg cooks like a large steak, if you like, in minimal time, so you can get the product out fast and fresh to your customers. Let's go through the butterfly Australian lamb leg. Today's recipe, Australian roast leg of lamb. For as long as I can remember, Australian lamb, particularly the roast, has been declared Australia's national dish. And I'm gonna show you a modern twist on this favorite. What we have here is our leg of lamb that's been butterfly. The reason I butterfly is so I can cook it in a quicker time and it's easier to carve in front of your customers. To marinate our lamb, we've got rosemary, lemon, garlic, salt and pepper, olive oil, and to finish off, I've made a bit of a base with some crushed green olive and also some anchovies, lemon and oil. First step, 
Let's make the nestling base for our lamb. Gastronome tray. Our lemon, rosemary, garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper. We're gonna make a mixture here that we're gonna nestle our lamb on. Then simply we've got our leg of lamb which we're gonna open up so it's fully splayed out in the tray. And then we're gonna to top it with our marinade of olives, anchovy, lemon and olive oil. Then we're gonna leave this one uncovered into the combi oven, 160 to 170 degrees, dry heat. We're gonna probe it to an internal doneness of 60 degrees. Then we're gonna simply rest it and carve it. Chef, here's my call to action on this one. The beauty of a boneless leg, like I said before, easy to carve, easy to serve. Don't always think a plated meal option. You can have a Buddha bowl if you like, you can have a torpedo lamb roast sandwich, you can even have a wrap, or it can even go as a salad topper. The versatility of a roast lamb leg is endless. It's up to your imagination to take it to the next step. To accompany my lamb, I've got some simple side condiments. Let's start off with the carrots. Heirloom carrots, nothing fancy about this. We're just gonna roast them off to get some great color. To accompany our carrots, we've got some cauliflower, a bit of lemon juice, some grilled halloumi and caramelized onion will really take that cauliflower to the next level. And then finally, we've got our olive, parsley and tahini yogurt, which we're just gonna put over the top of our lamb. The lamb's ready and wow, doesn't that look amazing? We're gonna serve it now with our condiments and get it to our customers. Share the lamb. Chefs, food service operators, educators, here's my call to action. You've seen the videos of both Doug, our butcher, and myself walking you through these four wonderful dishes. Head to the Rare Medium Academy website, raremediumacademy.com, after the masterclass here today, and we have all the recipes ready to go for you to take away and influence into your business. Now, it's time to give away the Weber Smokefire EX6. Well, this is the premium go-to barbecue. Thank you to our uh, entrance. We're just gonna give you a, a short video on how this barbecue cooks and how it can be part of your food service establishment. Thanks to our friends at Weber Australia. Authentic wood-fired flavor has never been so convenient. The smoke fire makes barbecuing easy and stress-free no matter what foods you want to cook. All you need to do is change the temperature on the dial to set up your barbecue for different cooking methods. 95 is as low as you can go. 120 degrees Celsius is the ideal low and slow cooking temperature. 200 degrees is the perfect roasting temperature. And then you have 300 to 315 degrees Celsius for the ultimate searing temperatures. The smoke fire will maintain your selected temperature. So if you're in the chilly parts of New Zealand or in the tropics of far north Queensland, the smoke fire's precision temperature control will perform the same, guaranteeing outstanding cooking results every time. Refueling on a low and slow barbecue could be a thing of the past. A full nine kilo bag fits in the hopper of the barbecue and lasts up to about 15 hours, so it truly is set and forget. What's really cool though is everything that we've just spoken about, you can control and monitor from your smartphone via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You can view the ambient temperature of your cooking grill. You can track the food progression based on time and temperature. You can receive alerts like when your barbecue is running low on fuel or is ready to shut down. You can even control the barbecue's temperature or activate various features. Just don't expect the smoke fire to flip the steak for you. The grease management system in the smoke fire does most of the hard work compared to solid fuel barbecues or other pellet barbecues. There's no grease bucket that hangs on the side of the barbecue. There's no grease tray that you need to line with foil. There's no need to rely on a vacuum cleaner to clean it. Yes, that's a thing. The grease management system includes a handy grease and ash drawer so when you're cooking the grease and debris fall straight into it. Imagine having the confidence to simply barbecue any meal, knowing it will be amazing every time with the added convenience of the smoke fire. 
For more information, send us a message today. So thanks to our friends at Weber Australia. Now for the winner of this wonderful unit. Well, just a big thank you to all our applicants that uh, applied. There were some really good uh, recipes out there, but there can be only one winner. And that is Kitchen Time blogger from Western Australia, Jessica Wallace. Congratulations, you're the winner of this $2,500 EX6 Weber Smoke Fire. I want to see some plenty of dishes coming from you, Jessica, this Christmas with Australian red meat in the Weber. So a big thanks to Peter McKnight and the team at Weber Australia who, who picked this winner and were in touch with us today. And that tri-tip rump is a cracking dish. Well done and congratulations. Well, that wraps it up for Weber Australia with this wonderful prize and Rare Medium Academy for 2020. Remember, we are here to make sure that you have success with Australian red meat on menu. Get behind the summer lamb campaign. There's gonna be big spend behind media and influence all throughout Australia. It just makes sense to generate foot traffic and get lamb on your menu in January. A big thank you to our team, TNM Creative, Julie Ballard, um, um, also Troy Cowell, who's our food producer, and Scott Cameron, Doug Piper, the team behind MLA that have given the Rare Medium Academy the birth to take it forward. Our comms team, thank you very much, Heidi and the team, Kim, behind the comms, who make sure that we get the registers so we know who's tuning in. This will be back in 2021 in February with food that travels. Red meat dishes that travel through delivery providers and get to the customer in an optimum fashion. Do join us then. I wish you a Merry Christmas, a happy and safe new year. Let's be positive food service and kick 2021 off to a flying start. Sam Burke, Corporate Chef for Meat and Livestock Australia for Rare Medium Academy. Merry Christmas.